Hi, it's Chrissy Miles, and you're watching The Chrissy Miles Show, where I teach you how to take eternal truth and produce extreme results. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how God promises to supply your financial needs. growing up, we were a middle-class family with a poverty mindset. And what that meant to me was that, you know, we had enough to take care of our needs, but it was always this feeling or spirit of lack that we had in our family that maybe there wasn't going to be enough or we're struggling to pay our bills or struggling uh, to, you know, just put food on the table. And, you know, there is really no precedent for a poverty mindset in the life of the believer. At least there shouldn't be. So I want to teach you how God promises to supply all of your financial needs. And I'm going to show you in the word how God takes a poverty mindset and turns it into a mindset of more than enough. But first, subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified each week of more of my proven methods to get more out of life. Let's get started. Here's step number one. Understand that God cares for his people. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, the Bible says this, When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. You know, this is really a hallmark scripture for understanding finances and God's financial provision in the Bible. It is a story of how God took the Israelites out of the land of Egypt and he was bringing them into a place that he promised to bring them to, essentially a land of their own. Now, this was a promise that God had made to the Hebrews 430 years prior to them actually leaving to go to the promised land. So it's important to note two things. First of all, that God made a promise to their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And even after 430 years, God was still in the process of making good on that promise. And that promise was, again, to bring them into a land that would be their own, where he could be their God, they could be his people, and that they could worship him freely according to the precepts that he had given them. So as they get ready to move out from Egypt into the land that he would show them, he basically tells them what they're going to experience when they get there. And he tells them that they're going to move into houses that they didn't build. They're going to enjoy vineyards that they didn't plant. They're going to have wells that they didn't dig. So essentially what God is saying is that every need that the Hebrews would have, he was going to make a plan for all of those things to be taken care of even before they got there. Have you ever been to a really great hotel and when you check in, there's like cookies at the reception station or flavored water at the lobby or when you get into your room, you know, you have chocolates on your pillow. That is a, an example of someone who is anticipating your arrival and who is taking care of your needs, even needs that you might not even recognize that you would have when you get there. You're really appreciative that someone thought of the details. And that's the kind of God that the Hebrews serve. And that's the kind of God we serve. So it's very important to understand throughout all of scripture, the entire history of God relating to his people, Financially, he cares for his people and he desires to take care of their needs before they even arrive at the place of need. So what's your biggest challenge in believing that God wants to provide for you financially? Let me know in the comments below if you've ever struggled having enough money to meet your needs. Here's step number two. God's provision is always more than enough. Look at this passage in Philippians chapter four. 
It says, my God will meet all of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So this passage you probably have heard of before, it's in Paul's letter to the Philippians. And the interesting thing about the Philippians is that God had Paul sent there to minister to the churches there. And what happened was that when Paul went on his way to minister in some other areas in Macedonia, it was the Philippian church that actually provided for part of Paul's needs while he was on his journey. And so when Paul is writing back to them, thanking them for the gifts that they have sent him that continued or helped him to continue on in the ministry, he reminded them that even though they may have been struggling personally, that God was a God that meets people's needs according to his riches. Now, this is really important. First of all, Paul highlights this phrase, and my God. And I believe the reason why he's emphasizing that is because he wants people to know that the gospel that he's been preaching and the message that he has been sharing is something that is personal to him in the sense that he has personally experienced it. And all throughout Paul's writings, you can see that the revelation that he received on the road to Damascus in actually seeing Jesus and experiencing him in person is what fueled him throughout his entire ministry. And big part of his testimony was communicating to the people that I have experienced this personally. I've had a personal revelation, a personal encounter with God, and I am here now to give you the message that God shared with me. So when he says, my God will meet all of your needs, it would have caused the church in Philippi to recall the stories that Paul had shared with him about his personal interaction with the God of the universe through Jesus Christ. And so it would have caused them to reflect on the personal nature with which Paul encountered and spoke with God and related to God so that they would be encouraged and reminded that this same God that Paul served, that he had a personal relationship with it, now they knew because of Christ Jesus, this God was the kind of God that would meet their needs according to his riches. For more tips on how God promises to supply your financial needs, I want you to download a free MP3 that I'm calling Blessed and Highly Favored. And in this teaching, I'm going to show you that the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. This is a passage in Psalms. So follow the link in the description and download this free MP3, Blessed and Highly Favored. Here's step number three. Understand that the greater the risk, the greater the reward. So there's an interesting story in 1 Samuel chapter 17 of David going to do battle against the Philistine army with the Israelites. And as he gets there, all of these people start telling him, hey, anybody who kills Goliath, the king is going to give this guy his daughter in marriage, and he's going to exempt his family from all the taxes in Israel. And David was kind of confused about this. And he said, tell me that again. Uh, say what? What's going to be done for the guy who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Uh, what's going to happen? And they told him again, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be able to marry the king's daughter and your family is going to be exempted from all the taxes in Israel. And this is, this is a sure thing. The king has said it. So in this story, you can see that David is taking on a really great risk. And the king knew that as well, which is why he promised anybody who would go and try to fight Goliath would not only receive this, these taxes that free forever, but he would marry the king's daughter. So what was the king doing? He was essentially upping the ante to try to entice someone to go out and fight this Philistine. And the, you know, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Think about the heart that David had as a young boy, remember. Like he wasn't a grown man with, with tons of fighting experience. This was a shepherd boy. And yet there was something inside him that prompted him to say, I'm willing to take that risk. Now you have to ask yourself the question, why? Why would David take that risk? Was it just because he wanted to marry the king's daughter? Is it just because he wanted his family to be exempt from the taxes in Israel? No. The reason why David was actually compelled to take the risk is because he had a relationship with God that he had developed over his the entire course of his life up until this point that caused him to be secure or sure about the outcome of taking that risk. Now, I'm sure that David certainly was excited about receiving that reward. That's a pretty big reward to take on the fighting of a giant. 
But the reality is the thing that actually motivated him to take the risk was the confidence that he had in knowing what the outcome would be because of his relationship with God. That is built on a long relationship, a fellowship with God, of being able to know God's character in nature and know that God is a God who takes care of people. And that's the beauty of stepping out in risk and receiving that great reward. It's not so much about the receipt of the reward though, as much as it is about the confidence that you can have in taking the risk. So when you see opportunities around you, the real question that you should be asking is not, well, what will I get out of taking this risk? But the real question you should be asking yourself is, is God in this with me? Is God working this through me? Is God my partner in this? Will God see me through? And of course, the answer to that is yes, he is your partner. He will work through you to get this thing done. But the question then becomes, do you really believe it? You can say with your mind, yes, God's on my side. God's in this with me. But if there's any place in your heart where you doubt that, or you're not exactly sure that he is going to come through for you, you're not going to be successful in your financial endeavors. And so it's important to start at the place where you're at. There's no expectation for you to jump in into a place that is far beyond your ability to believe and trust God. But the greater the risk, knowing that you have a relationship with God where you are confident that he is going to see you through to the other side, the greater the reward. And of course, the beauty of that whole story in light of this topic that we're talking about today is that David and his entire family, because of the risk that he was willing to take, were exempted from taxes in Israel for the rest of their family's history. Imagine what that would do to your finances, right? And of course, we know that David went on actually to be the king of Israel as well, which was another financial blessing. Now you might say, well, this is just a story of David. That was one guy in the Bible. But what I'm gonna show you in this series is that blessing that was on one person in the Bible has now been made available to every every person who puts their faith in God. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed these tips about how God promises to supply all of your financial needs. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, and if you know somebody who's struggling financially, share this video with them. It might be what they need to turn their finances around once and for all. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button for new episodes each Tuesday where I teach you how to get more out of life. Thanks for watching.